Kramer here. Welcome, man. Thank you for being here. What's up, Jake? Thank you for having me, man. All right. So I know that you're um, you're touring with uh, Skid Row and, and Buckcherry. How'd you get involved uh, with that tour? Well, uh, my uh, booking agent, TKO, uh, Andrew Goodfriend, uh, brought the opportunity to my manager, Brian Wheat, who's actually uh, the bass player from Tesla. We've been doing quite a few shows with Tesla. And which has helped us as far as uh, getting more traction and, and continuing to move up in our shows and whatnot. Because we've only been touring now, what, September will be two years. So we're really excited about it. Andrew came with the opportunity and uh, uh, we can't wait to get out on the road with them. But that's how it all came about. That's really cool. Yeah, I was uh, talking actually one of my previous interviews another musician who's also connected with brian weed from tesla so it's, oh, cool. it's, yeah it's, it's kind of a small world and i was wondering um like when it comes to your formative influences when you were growing up was that the style of music that you gravitated to no, uh, yeah, I, I gravitated to rock. I had a period where I, I moved around a lot. My dad was in the oil business, so every time he got a new job, we had to move. But we had landed in Houston for about six years, my middle school years and my first couple of years of high school. And there's a lot, you know, the Coliseum down there and the Summit and all that. And there were bands rolling through there all the time. And I saw Iron Maiden before Bruce was even in the band and UFO. Oh, so Paul Diano? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, wow. Ozzy and Randy. I saw that show, but you know, before Randy passed, um, Black Sabbath with Ronnie James Dio, Cheap Trick, the shirt I have on, uh, Rush, all those bands, and and I, I they in in Boston. I used to jam in my bedroom all the time. You know, the first two Boston albums, and I just love that kind of rock and roll. I love the simplicity of it and how kick ass it was and how it made me feel as a kid and i just always said if someday the timing's right and i can actually feel like i can get on a stage and command it like those folks did back then i'd love to do that and uh at this time in my life i felt like i only live once and i'm gonna go back into music and do what i always wanted to do as a kid so here i am man and those yeah. were all my van halen fair warning tour man that the I just wanted to do that, you know, so. So you have a lot of experience, a lot of um, sights and sounds and your formative experience to treasure. Like, like you mentioned, just seeing all these artists in their prime at the time. Right. So in your formative years, uh, aside from listening to a lot of music, experiencing that kind of music, um, were you doing any recording at that point? Did you join bands and kind of get your feet wet in that regard? Yeah, when I was younger, I was still, I had suffered from a lot of anxiety and I didn't realize what it was. So I self-medicated a lot when I was younger and tried to figure out why I got anxious and nervous all the time. But I found, figured out on my own, my brain didn't make serotonin. So I've since cured that on my own. And, uh, changed my whole life and I always wanted to and I played in the band in, in, high, in high school and college off and on with friends and whatnot and kind of had a serious one in my early 20s before I ended up uh, meeting uh, my kid's mother and then I had three boys and took a whole different path but uh, yeah I, I did it music and, and uh, dabbled in drums and keyboards and lead singing Till I was about 20, and then I kind of hung it up, uh, met my kid's mom, did the family thing, started my own companies once I figured out all the other stuff, you know, going on in my brain. And uh, I just said, if I can ever go back and there's a sign that it's time to go back and do the creative uh, thing again and not keep it suppressed, I would do it. And in 2017... I was out doing a cameo in a, for a movie called Trading Paint where my oil brand Starfire was in because I had started, you know, in my early 30s of my own oil company and uh, called Starfire Coolants Plus. And I was down there for a cameo and they were started taking pictures of me and whatnot. And they go, we need like for you to have a speaking role in the movie. 
So that was kind of my sign from above. Okay, I never thought I'd be an actor, um, but here I am getting offered a role with John Travolta and Shania Twain right across from me, right here in this movie. So that was my sign, and uh, I ended up being in Trading Paint um, with, you know, learning from John Travolta that same night, learning my lines, and became an actor. All of a sudden, I'm a member of SAG. <laughs> and you then like, couple... At that point, were you like, Wait, I was so like, I'm an actor now, plus I have like, you know, all these musical ideas formulating up, you know. That yeah, I, I had, a, well, and the, the music didn't even hit me yet, like, okay, now I'm an actor, then I'm in Halloween with Jamie Lee Curtis, I get killed by Michael Myers, so I'm <laughs> becoming an actor here. Yeah. It, I'm on the red carpet in Hollywood for that, at the Chinese theater, I'm like, what the hell, and then that year I'm down shooting some other stuff now that I'm acting in Alabama and I met a gentleman by the name of Ben Trexel out of Birmingham who had a few songs that just kind of were playing they, they were great tunes but they were like he was kind of like a wedding singer if you will not to you know it just kind of sounded like that to me I go well my voice is unique and him and I got together and we recorded uh these three songs with my voice and I had just got back into it from 30 years ago. This is at the beginning of 2019. And uh, I'm like, I really like this too. So I'm going to do start a band work because everybody told me there's no way you can make it in music, especially at this point in your life. And I go, well, I got a lot of lyrics in my brain. I've got a lot to tell. I've got people to stand up for in this world because this world's scary. And I want people to see that you can really accomplish your goals and, that we all just need to be kind to each other and take care of each other. And what a better place to do that than on stage at a rock show like I've always wanted to done, do. And uh, here I am. So Yeah, and all these opportunities have just come your way, like you were saying. And, like, it, it must have it must have kind of made you take a step back and saying, this is, this is me, this is here, this is my sign. And not only that, but my approach to these opportunities is being felt. They can see that hunger that still resides in me. And it's coming across not in it by like desperation, but like it, it's it's like kind of like people can see your passion and try to digest it and understand it, saying like, this guy's actually a decent guy. You know, that kind of thing. Exactly. No, I'm, I'm not doing this because I have to do it. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it because I want to do it for all of you. And I want to share what I've learned in my lifetime and how I fought the battles of all the shit we got to deal with every day on this earth. And I'm not scared of it. And I know how to overcome. I know how to, for somebody to say, Hey, Jake, you can't do that. Yeah, well, you I know. know what? Jake can do that. Jake can yeah, do yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, that's, well, you know, to, not no. to put the spotlight on me, but, you know, I was born disabled. I have I have a disability, and I found out in just explaining that to people and telling people about my circumstances in, like, a very digestible and kind of humorous means, there's, like, no room for that. They always, one way or another, would shoot me down. Like, oh, you're just a cripple. Why? Why are you trying to do music? Why are you trying to sing? Why are you trying to interview people? Like, you're just gonna, you're just right. gonna be a wheelchair. You know, that's that's all you're gonna amount to be. So, like, but I've kind of, I've kind of defied th those expectations because look, I'm doing a music thing. This is like right. completely right. removed from my disability or my my age too. I'm I'm 32 and like I I'm sticking in there, you know. And yeah, man. And you're fighting for what you want, and you're doing it, and you're doing it your way, and you're not yeah. listening to all the negative naysayers out there because yeah. oh, they're man. all over the place. They want to keep you down. I mean, I had to get back into this music business. It's tough, and I had to figure out who's with me, who's not, who's screwing me, who's who's real, who's really my friend, who's really got my back. And 
it's not easy, but I knew it going into it. I'm going to have to fight for this because nobody thinks I can do it. Just like you, man, I'm more power to you, brother. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's cool because you mentioned like age being like, or like industry execs, what have you seeing age as like a deterrence, but no one really cares about somebody's age unless they're asked. Like, you know, the police didn't make it until they were in their 30s. And, like, I knew a a singer-songwriter, Kevin Matthews, he said people told him he was too old when he was 28. Like, what the hell? Like, and it goes to show you, like, whether you make, you debut when you're 20 or you're 40, like, people don't give a shit. No, as long as you got a good message and you got you believe in what you do. Yeah, and, and you know your we go, audience. We go, we go out and we put on a show. We've done a lot of open a lot of show openings with Tesla. We've been out with Jeff Tate. We've been out with Ingve Malmsteen. Everybody's like, Why are you going out with Ingve Malmsteen? He's just a guitar shredder. You're a band that has tunes. And people came away from those shows loving us. You gotta challenge yourself. You gotta defy the odds. I go out. I, I, I'm so much more comfortable now than I was at the first show we did. Right. And I just go out and I want that audience to go away going, what the hell is <laughs> fucking happening? You know, that word of this band come from, and that's what we're doing. So like, just to go back a bit, I hope you don't mind, but when you were in your kind of, uh, doing the conventional career after the music thing, um, took a back seat when you were you were buying and selling properties and like during that time were you generating like were, did you still have like music on the side as far as writing like ideas and like no, formulating when, when that I, stuff up or it was it completely of, yeah, yeah when i got out of music and got married at a young age and and st- you know then we had the family i was I totally spent those years in my, I have three sons and uh, spent their, those years with them every night. I, the only creativity I did was make up stories for them when they went to bed and <laughs> all that kind of stuff, you know, oh, and we, man. Listened, we listened to music together and all that, but I was totally zoned in on building, uh, on, on learning the oil business. And then once I learned it, I rolled the dice because I figured I could go sell cars if I had to. I, I could sell, so I could do whatever. I, I, and I, like you said, it's, I'm impressed that you knew I was buying and selling properties. I had no money. Nobody, no, nobody handed me anything. 1995, I'm dead broke. And um, I just said, you know, I'm going to figure this out. And I, I learned, I took one of those courses where you learn how to buy and sell property, no money down. That was on an infomercial and, then I raised 40 grand buying and selling houses and renting them out, put it in a checking account because no bank believed in me. They said, you can't start an oil company. You can't do this. You can't do that. So I put 40 grand in a checking account. And now here we are 23, 24 years later. I own a huge distribution facility in Cincinnati. I own a huge blending plant where we blend our own oil up in Pennsylvania in the Northeast. We ship Starfire all over the world. And it all started above my garage with a phone and a dry erase board. And I was buying oil from point A, selling it to point B to raise money and just kept putting it back in. And now here I am. They, that runs itself. Now I'm going to do what people told me I can't do, front ma- be a front man in a rock band that goes all over the world. And our goal is to be playing arenas within five years. And I'm going to keep doing kick-ass movies and entertain people. I've got one coming out called Scared to Death where now I star in the movie alongside Lynn Shea from Insidious and something about Mary and Kingpin and Bill Mosley from Devil's Rejects and how, you know, all the Rob Zombie films. We're, we're starring in this movie together and it's coming out to a theater near you. So here I am. I'm doing what everybody told me I can't do because that's how I'm wired. That's where they're going. Yeah, and I'm going <laughs> to... And I continue with my craft in the same way. And... Uh, and, and speaking of that, when, when it comes to your music, when when you had uh, your debut um, in, in 2021, I mean, all I got to say from like 
top to bottom, beginning to end. Like I can feel the warmth. I can feel the heaviness. I can like just to start off, like, um, how did you approach like production to like get that sound? Like it, it has such a really warm organic sound. On our work hard, rock hard EP, our day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's our debut EP, and then we'll, our big debut double album is going to come out next year for our, our you know, really introducing a, a Kurt Dimer to the world. But yeah, work hard, rock hard. I, I had started out under the name Bald Man, and I uh, had brought a demo of songs I had written with Ben Trexel, who I had mentioned earlier out of Birmingham to uh, LA with me right before uh, COVID hit, and I was setting up a little studio out in LA and and my manager at the time, or, you know, who was kind of acting as a manager at the time, he uh, was calling around to get this demo heard. And he called Chris Lord Algae. And he said, yeah, I'll look at that. And it, it, everybody was kind of slow. And Chris uh, really uh, took my project and my demo and was treating me very kindly about it, whether he liked it all or not. And we met for dinner and Chris Lord Algae and I became great friends. And then we just started writing out have a cigar was the first song. He said, let me take that little cover you and Ben wanted to do. I'll show you what we can do with this. Next thing I know, I hear this guitar solo on have a cigar. I'm like, who the hell is that? And it's Phil X from Bon Jovi. So. Yeah. They're in. That's where you got work hard, rock hard. I think every, what you're saying, I wrote with Ben Trexel, but that's Phil on guitar and, Chris burned together the Jeff Tate, the one I did with Jeff Tate. Ben and I wrote that, but that's all Chris and Phil X and me and Brian Tishy on drums. You always hear Brian Tishy on drums on my stuff. And then um, the um, back of the school, naive, um, only time will tell. And so, and we just thought that would give a good introduction of what we're all about. It allows me to get some of the shit off my chest of what I've been through, like the song Naive is all about getting taken yeah. advantage of. Oh, so, man. Like, I, yeah, I I'm totally. Glad, I'm, glad, I'm glad you felt it, you know. Yeah, what I you're totally, saying is. I, t- I totally uh, related with, uh, you know, especially with the sentiments of Naive because people would yeah. take. <laughs> People would take advantage of you even when you have absolutely nothing. When you have very little, they're still gonna they're still gonna get you. They're still gonna squeeze all oh, that yeah. thing with the tweezers out. Like squeeze, geez. squeeze, squeeze. And they you know it, it drove me crazy and uh, I'm just trying to help other people in that song. Hey, there's out people out there, there's uh, blood suckers everywhere. Be, don't be naive, don't just buy the first thing you hear do your due diligence and do your best to try to avoid that as much as possible. And then what you say, and I wrote in 15 minutes, just sitting on a a deck when I had gotten back home during COVID, just like what the hell's going on in the world and people just need to be kind and take care of each other. And that resonates every time we play it. I mean, people just go hell that that hit home. And that's what I'm trying to do with my lyrics. You know, Um, Mm -hmm. just want to help people and help them. Help them think, have a great time, let's party, and let's go home and kick some ass. And I especially like what Jeff Tate said about you. And, like, when I heard that song burn together, I was like, yep, Jeff Tate's on there. You can see, like, ah! Like, his his signature kind of range. Like, everyone would be happy to to hear him featured on the track. But um, more poignantly, like, he admires your storytelling ability. He admires like how you shape these ideas. Yeah. Yeah. He's been, he was very influential early on for me. I was blessed to have him in my music video for burn together to take me out on tour with him, And, uh, you know, that just to be on that song, which I wrote about the demise of today's family. I mean, without the, the structure of the family unit, look at what's happening in the world, you know, it's just uh, people forget the core values that, you know, we've had decades ago and it doesn't seem to exist anymore. So and for him to believe enough in that and then to feature on that song with me, it's it's was amazing. So mm-hmm. I owe a lot to Jeff. Yeah, I, I just love how the whole 
EP comes together. And uh, also, I like how the qualities that your voice um, takes too. Like, there's a lot of layering going on. And what you do is you take your kind of bass register, what you do with the spoken word, and then you use that as just another layer of of the vocal approach that you do, which I found was like very interesting. A lot of the times the spoken word aspect is like completely separate from the singing approach, but it's kind of cool how you put it together. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, especially when I first got back into it, it was a lot easier because of my voice. And, you know, I, I'm hopefully going to be doing a lot of voiceover stuff for movies and all that, but and uh, radio and, and, and shit like that. But my voice, I, I could tell the message. I could train my voice. You know, I had to get back in. I had to train my voice. I had to figure out what my voice was. And now I think you'll hear in some of the new, all of our newer stuff, now I'm singing even two octaves higher than I used to be able to because of all the touring I've done and the training and working uh, with Chris and Brian in the studios. Um, I have more confidence. Uh, my pitches. And got you know, like barely having to do anything now, but that's all comes from not doing it for 30 years. And now when you go see a show, it's like I'm totally different than it was a couple of years ago because I've been training my vocal cords are coming into their own. But yeah, I'm staying true to who I am. I'm still going to add a little spoken in when it's appropriate, but you're going to even hear more layers where I can be low, mid range, high, and then I'm even going higher. So you're going to hear me on all the different parts now on upcoming songs yeah oh yeah man i i I love that and um speaking of your your new stuff that you're about to introduce i know you had a a recent single called doom and that's like especially like a, a really heavy song like heavier than than the stuff that you did before and uh is this kind of a preview of what's coming yeah, yeah, I've got uh, Doom just came out. Thanks for mentioning that, August 11th. And uh, we're pushing it to radio right now. So hopefully everybody will go and call their local station and tell them they want to hear Kurt Time or Doom because it's heavy. And it's uh, I wrote that from the movie I star in called Hellbilly Hollow. So it's featured in that movie, and that's my movie franchise. That'll be coming out next year, too. And, uh, yeah, Doom is uh, kind of a – I, I want to rock out. I got – stuff to say doom is obviously about you know the people that uh, can get into the dark deepness of addiction and uh and not be able to come out of it now, specifically heroin and whatnot and uh it's a horror type film or a, a horror type song for that move for uh hellbilly hollow but yeah i want to be heavier i want to be more creative i'm being more creative in how i write i want to bring back that rock and roll that like people haven't heard since like when acdc came out or van halen came out and took the world i and i do it my way with my sound and i got doom i've got a song called look coming out that's badass uh live or die i think we're gonna play on tour a lot of good new stuff besides what we already have out and uh, you'll see that our uh, sound is starting to take shape and our direction is uh, becoming very succinct so thanks for noticing that yeah when you channel those trying times in your music such as the addiction that you went through uh in your 20s um does it feel kind of rocky kind of stepping back into that mind frame or are you able to like do something where you you pull like tidbits of those moments out without like feeling the damage coming to the surface still yeah i mean we we would all be lying if we didn't say in our past that some of the stuff in our past that Will, will still affect us mentally today because, you know, you're always going to struggle with some of the negative things that have happened in a relationship in your life. Or if you were, at, you know, if you were mistreated by somebody or, you know, when I was younger, you know, medicating my, uh, you know, anxiety with cocaine and marijuana and drinking too much and all because I didn't know how to relax. And then I finally figured that out. I mean, yeah, I mean, but I, I'm also thankful that I quit doing any kind of drugs when I was 20 years old, you know, and didn't carry it into my today. Cause there's a lot of people my age 
but you'd be surprised your closet cocaine do you know doing cocaine in the closet or doing whatever i mean there's yeah. a lot of people on drugs that you wouldn't expect are and i left that you know back in my 20s so i mean i like to smoke a little weed and drink vodka and water that's all i do now and smoke cigarettes so i left all that shit behind do i regret that i ever no i learned from it all right if i didn't do that then i wouldn't be who i am today so you just got to take what's happened to you in your life squeeze the positive out of it leave the negative in the past as much as possible and then take that positive things you learn from that and carry that into your future that's the way i've always been that's really good and um Speaking of uh, your acting stuff, I just saw the trailer today for uh, Hellbilly Hollow, and you're actually an executive producer on that. Now, let's let's get into that, but before that, um, uh, it said that it was filmed in Alabama, and is that the same haunted house that's in Vincent, Alabama? That's where I lived for a month. I lived in a trailer at Hellbilly Hollow in Vincent, Alabama. So yeah, oh, so it has that like personal resonance with you too. Oh yeah, I just lived in a little trailer there. Uh, me and Tickles, Kevin Wayne, who plays uh, my brother Tickles in the movie, and uh, we just lived in two little campers there. And we get up and just go kick ass and have fun and uh, be crazy and just uh, film that movie for a whole month down there. So it's been a passion project. It's a franchise. I refer to it as kind of like the first Halloween, if you will kind of low, yeah. you know, you do the best you can with it and then take it to the next level on the next one. Once you have a studio who believes in it, which is what we're currently, we're pitching it right now because I've already got Hellbilly Hollow 2 written and uh, where it goes from there. And yeah, it just allowed me to show people what I can really do, how I have this other, these different sides to me. And I'm just a crazy madman in the movie that is comical as well as, demented and i really enjoy playing that person in not in real life but in movie life so you mentioned that you already have the sequel written and that's like processing that now that really inspires me because um it kind of sends me a signal like you know let's say i'm doing an interview and like i have like two others like playing ahead for instance like right it's always going to keep you active, keep you busy, keeping you like in that movement, because if you're just working on one thing and then that's the thing, it's going to be a while before you have that momentum again. So it's good that you mentioned that you always have to have stuff in the back so that, you know, once, oh, yeah, man. once those circumstances happen, you'll have that to, to like, also learn from too because every interview in my view is is a new experience you know yeah oftentimes it's just a one and done deal but i've had others who've come back and and you're always welcome on too so so oh, i really I'm, appreciate I'm, that I'm, that kind of exchange of ideas that really resonates with me yeah whenever you want me on man jake you know i'll be here so you're you're part of the family now but and that's what we're building the kurt dimer family and yeah i've always got proud i'm getting ready to go back to la watch where the movie is now with lynn shea i'm good probably i'll be out with chris uh lord algae talking about a couple of the songs that we're finishing up that he's mixing i've been in new york with my manager brian working on music there um i've got about 30 to 40 tunes in the pipeline it's hard to pick which ones i want to put on the debut album and uh, you just got to constantly keep creating and you can't force it. Like I'll, I may tonight at midnight have a verse come into my head and I'll write it in my notes and I'll make a little voice memo and that could be the next song. But I don't force it. I don't say today I'm going to write a song. It just has to happen, you know, and that's how that's how I do all that or a, a movie idea. I'll send it over to one of my my script writers. Uh, you know, Paul Boyd's been writing a lot of scripts for me. He's a brilliant creative uh, director, writer, and I'll send him ideas all the time. So we're getting ready to write another movie here. You find that, um, like, in, like, a completely random moment, an idea would spark, like, at 
at what seems to be like the very end of a creative process and you're like, shit, I have another idea that would like make this succinct or wrap this up that like I never considered before. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's like, I, I know one of the, one of the, this jam and tune we have coming out called look, it was just one day on the bus on tour and I just went to Phil X on the back of the bus. I go, I like this, how this cadence is right here. Um, every time I look around, I try to find the reason, try to find the sound. And I go, let's make that into us. And that's how that whole song started. So a little tidbit. Now it's just a slammer. And I can't wait for people to hear it when it comes out. So It's really cool. And as far as the people you worked with, with uh, production and continuing to, to channel those sounds, uh, have you, would you say your relationships with all of them have gotten a lot stronger over the years? Oh, well, well Chris Lord Algy and I are like best friends. Nobody really believes it, but we, we really are, um, you know, sin sincere humans to each other. And we do things outside of music together, but nobody believes me, but whatever. I don't care if they do or not. And Brian Leet and I are great friends and Brian takes care of me and Dean Robson, my other man, I mean, I finally have people around me that I know believe in me, that love me and care about me. My band is shaped up to the people that I know want to be there, want to go on this mission with me to playing arenas all over the world. And it's very important to me that I have to try to keep the same people, even though I'm Kurt Dimer, I've still loved it when I went to see a band in the seventies and eighties that was the same people all the time, you know, as a family and uh, we're on a mission and, uh, we're just trying to bring goodness and hard kick-ass rock and roll to the world. And that's a pretty simple mission. And, uh, you know, no, not a lot of frills or anything. I might get a little crazy. I might do some weird shit, but my heart is in it. My heart is for everybody else. I have a big heart and I have a lot to give. And I believe the more you give, the more you get in life. And that's pretty much our mission. Mm -hmm. And considering all you've been through, you know, with your addiction going through that and getting through that and the paths you took before returning to your music and then thriving like you're doing now, what have you learned about yourself, not only as a musician, but as a person? Well, I learned even uh, through all the trouble, troubling times before I was, you know, 30, um, you know, the twenties were rough and the teenage years, I learned that big time <laughs> that, that in, the, the inner Kurt, that worked his ass off and that always had ideas, but he just couldn't figure out how to, how to make them happen into a reality yeah. that I, I, I know that I was right and I was on the right path. I just had to grow up. I had to mature. I had to go through these phases of my life to perfect these ideas and then make them a reality, you know, starting with starting my own oil companies and whatnot. It's just, I always knew I had it and it would just bug me. I'm like, what do I have to do? How do I? How do can this? I execute do, this? Right? How can I execute all these ideas that I know are being suppressed inside me because I'm scared? And then, you know, once I figured out how to get the serotonin right in my brain, and the rest is history. I'm not afraid of anything now. And uh, all those ideas I had that I was crippled and couldn't do anything with, yeah. Are or they're all coming out now. I mean, take it from the cripple. You know, I have cerebral palsy, but I understand what you mean by crippled. So <laughs> there's well, that yeah. exchange. <laughs> and you're you're not crippled to me. You're Jake, and you're another human being, and you are, have a big heart, and you're a good person. And none of us should let anything that affects us take us down. You know, yeah. we're with. We're only going to live once. We we live, we deal with what we have to deal with. I lost my sister to ovarian cancer in 2013. Shit. I lost my dad three days later, or three years later. I was with both of them when they died. I watched them die. I've got to deal with that in my brain. Yeah, yeah. Half my family, you know, it's me, my mom, my sister, my dad. My sister was the big singer. She could have been on The Voice. My oh, dad sang in church choir, the baritone, you know, every Sunday. They're with me every time I go play a show now. I say, let's go rock this out because I was the one who was the loser who was going to do nothing. You know? And now these angels are with me and I'm doing everything they wanted to do. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. So don't ever let anybody call you 
a cripple. Uh, you can't do this. You can't do that because you're not. You're Jake. That's good, man. That's and I good. got you back. All right. Lastly, anything you'd like to say to your fans? Well, I'd love for everybody to know, you know, like you said earlier, Doom, our latest single just dropped August 11th. You can stream it anywhere you stream music, Spotify, Apple, all, all the services. And love for folks to follow us on Spotify, Instagram, Kurt Dimer, um, Facebook. Join the Kurt Dimer Fam Club on Facebook. Oh, and we got a new website, all revamped, KurtDimer.com. Um, we'll start having more Kurt Dimer lifestyle stuff in the merch store and all that there. Hopefully, we'll have tour contests soon. Um, I'm on IMDb. I'm on, oh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can check out our music videos at Kurt Dimer. And uh, got a couple movies coming out, Scared to Death, starring alongside Lynn Shea and Bill Mosley. And then my horror franchise, Hellbilly Hollow. So lots of good stuff coming from the Kurt Dimer uh, camp. And uh, can't wait to see people on the road with the gangs all here, too, or with Buck Cherry, Skid Row. And then October with Mushroom Head. 